Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday Talk. It's going to be a little different today. Uh, I am going to tell my personal weight loss story by popular request. I've had so many people asking for it. I've been meaning to do it for months. And for some reason, it's something that just always gets pushed to the back burner. Um, so I thought I'm going to do it, just going to get it done. And, uh, you know, I don't know how long this is going to take. So feel free to speed up the video <laughs> if you need to, uh, you know, um, because I've got you know, quite a bit here. Uh, I took some. I took some notes. Um, so before we get into that, though, I just want to welcome the new members that joined since the last time I gave a shout out to the new members. They will be up on the screen here. Thank you so much for joining my channel and giving me that support. In return, you guys get to ask me questions every week and I answer them personally by video in the membership pro or in the private members area. So uh, please do not hesitate to ask me questions because you have my attention. Um, so let's move on to my story. Uh, like I said, I've been getting many requests for it. Um, my journey with uh, obesity uh, is really all you can say about that because it's always been most of the time, most of the years of my life, it's been obesity versus even just being overweight. Although there were some parts that were just not too bad, um, but it's been a lifelong struggle. So uh, let's start. I'm going to show you a picture up here of what I think was around taken around my highest weight, which would have been 320-ish. And I say that because, you know, you get to a point where you just stop weighing yourself. You don't get on the scale anymore. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's about worst case scenario, um, that image. Um, so as as a toddler and as a child, uh, I, I was the chubby one of the family. I have uh, a sister who's one year younger than me. She was always skinny. I was always chubby. We grew up together with the same parents, eating the same food, and uh, somehow, you know, she's got that. She's got that metabolism that that burns through e even now. She's like skinny as a rail. She just burns through her calories. Um, and, uh, I just look at something and I, and I gain weight, but I have to talk about my mom because she struggled with the very same thing. Um, she, you know, there was a time in her life when she was super thin and, uh, you know, she gained a few pounds, went on a diet, all the pounds came back with more pounds. And, you know, she started that cycle just when I was starting to realize what a diet was and that even just being a few pounds more than your classmates when you're a young child, you feel different. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just the, the, the way of the world. I mean, anything that makes you a little different from the other kids, that's the thing that, you know, your classmates focus on and, and it, you know, at least that was my experience back then. So as a young child, I learned everything about dieting from my mother and her magazines. Now she, uh, because she was an immigrant and English was not her first language, she, uh, her strategy was to buy all of the magazines and that's, uh, a lot uh, how she learned to speak English and read English. She would just immerse herself in these, you know, North American magazines. And if you've, you know, know of these magazines from the 60s, uh, you will know that they sold, and they still do today, you know, what sells the magazines it, a lot, especially the women's magazines, are the diet headlines on the front. Lose 
10 pounds in three days, lose 20 pounds this week. You still see them on the newsstands. Um, so she would buy them religiously. Uh, there would always be all kinds of them there. And that's where she learned how to diet. And that's where I learned how to diet. And so, you know, I'm just going to let you know a few of the things that I learned from those magazines. Um, many of these I did more than once. Grapefruit and egg diet, the military diet, the cabbage soup diet, uh, slim fast and slender fast, AIDS. Those were those little caramels. You'd get like a box of chocolates and you ate two of those with black coffee and you wouldn't be hungry for hours. So they said, my sister and I used to steal them out of the fridge because we just thought they were candy. Uh, Scarsdale diet the liquid protein diet. Did anyone do that? Oh, uh, Jenny Craig, weight loss clinic, diet center. My mother brought me to my first Weight Watchers meeting. I was 12 going on 13. I was the only kid there. And that in itself was a little humiliating. Um, but, you know, it's... Uh, I, I actually enjoyed it after a while because I got a lot of encouragement from a lot of, of women that were there. And, um, you know, it was my first of many, 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 many times going into a Weight Watchers meeting. So later from one of these magazines, um, and I would say this was in the early 70s sometime, I learned, uh, you know, I learned about the Atkins diet that was in there. Um, and you know, that kind of may have been a, a turning point because it was one of the few, all these other ones that I've mentioned, I did not last long on them, um, except for maybe Weight Watchers. Um, these other ones, I mean, I would usually throw in the towel on the first day, maybe the second day. Um, so it, I mean, they were all a struggle. Um, so the Weight Watchers diet in the seven, or sorry, so the Atkins diet in the seventies, it, it kind of was the first one that worked for more than a few weeks. Um, and, and I was able to lose weight, but there was a real stigma attached to it. It was considered dangerous because you were eating eggs on the Weight Watchers diet, there was a warning in their little food plan, do not eat more than four eggs per week. Uh, you couldn't have butter on Weight Watchers. Butter was a swear word. Um, so uh, there was a lot of things about the Atkins diet that that, you know, people would tell me and I would just sort of hide the fact that I was following it because I didn't want to have that conversation of how dangerous it was, you know, eating steak is dangerous, eating butter, eggs, all those things. But I kept going back to that one um, because quite literally it was the only thing that I felt was sustainable for me. Um, and I had gotten to the point in at this time in the 70s where I truly thought something was wrong with me. I mean, I went to, you know, I went to some other programs too, like uh, Overeaters Anonymous and Food Addicts Anonymous and, and you know, 12-step help programs because I truly thought, you know, that the problem was me. And, and by then, a lot of it was, <laughs> you know, because I was I was pretty I was pretty mixed up by you know about a lot of things. So uh, you know, but literally, you know, I'm telling you all this to just so you know that I literally tried everything out there, and I kept going back to low carb and and Atkins um, and. As a result of weighing what I weighed, I just want to go over some of the issues that I had. Um, I had terrible acid reflux and gastric issues, um, you know, just things didn't feel right. When I was pregnant with my last uh, child, um, who is now 25 years old, he just turned 25, um, I had preeclampsia and that meant bed rest in the last few weeks of my pregnancy. Um, up until 
that time, you know, when I did have my last child and, and, you know, my weight was so high, I could not go for a walk. I couldn't, like even a block, I would, you know, be complaining about the pain in my feet and ankles and knees. And um, like, I just, you know, my, my mobility was becoming affected. I had plantar fasciitis and I totally forgot that I even had that until someone mentioned it recently that they had it. And I was like, oh yeah, I used to have that and now it's gone. Um, you know, I had a severely high blood pressure. Um, in fact, I was doing a training session with my job at a client's location and my nose spontaneously started bleeding one time and uh, it happened to be in a drugstore. Um, my clients, uh, you know, it was a drugstore um, business and I uh, checked on like they, you know how in drugstores, I don't know if where you are, but here in Canada, almost every drugstore has a blood pressure machine that you can sit down. Um, somebody was trying to help me and they suggested I take my blood pressure and I did. And it was like 140 something over. I can't even remember what it was, but um, it was kind of scary for me. Um, and that, you know, I'm, I'm going to put a picture up of around that time because there's another memory that I have of around that time that also made me realize that things had to change. Um, I knew that I was going to be uh, going, doing some traveling um, and I needed some clothing to wear for a couple of training sessions that I was going to have uh, to give presentations. And so I went to, you know, like literally the only store that had clothing in my size. And by that time, I was wearing a size 26. And the only outfit that I could find was the one that's in this picture I'm going to show you up on the screen. Um, it was completely hideous and I wore that, had matching pants too, if you can only imagine that. Um, I wore that same outfit at every presentation that I did because it was literally the only thing I could find in my size that fit me. Um, and, uh, you know, that whole time was completely humiliating and even even with all that it was like it was just so hard for me to not think that the problem was was me something terribly wrong with me in that I couldn't make the decision to change and what I was about to find out and and just didn't even realize it was that yeah, I had some problems, um, but there was also problems with the information that I was given um, and, and that I was not given. So, I mean, all this time, I'm, you know, I'm going to the doctor regularly. At no time was I ever told a way to rectify these things or that even these things were uh, life-threatening or... Um, I, you know, I was heading down a road that was going to be probably diabetes, high blood pressure, um, you know, all those things that, uh, you know, can cause stroke and heart disease and everything else. Like I, I, I never knew any of that. I was completely uninformed about a proper human diet and what were the things I needed to do to get myself back on the right path or well, I never was on the right path, but somewhere on a, on a path to, you know, healing these things. So one day I went for lunch uh, with a couple of friends and I hadn't seen um, one of the women in a long time. We had just, we had taken a course together. That's how we met. And she started to talk about her son who had many epileptic seizures. And she talked about how many seizures he had and the, you know, just the road that they had been on. 
And it turns out that they were able to control his seizures through something called a ketogenic diet. That's that's when I first heard those, like that particular word. And so then I started looking into it and I found out so many things. And I would say this is about 2012, just over 10 years ago. Um, you know, I found out about the Inuit people who thrived apparently on uh, whale blubber, seal blub blubber protein. I mean, they didn't have much of any vegetables at all. Um, I found out, uh, you know, so many things. Like I just started reading all these things. And it was around that time that I started trying to follow it. And, uh, you know, I started cooking different and trying not to be afraid of, you know, butter and bacon and eggs and steak and, and those sorts of things. I found out that there were people out there who were carnivores. Um, I found, uh, even, I, I even found Kelly Hogan. I think she was in her first or second year. I just happened to Google and came across, you know, people who just ate meat. At that time, I wasn't ready for that. I, I, you know, just was so not ready to hear that that could potentially be my future. Um, but it, you know, it got me, it got me started. It, it got me back to looking at Atkins again, because I kind of thought, well, it sounds like Atkins and it sounds like, you know, like it's, you know, what they all have in common is the, the low carbs. So anyways, that lunch, uh, date uh, helped me to re-look at low carb and keto or look at keto. I started Googling um, and, uh, you know, learned a lot of things. And, and I just basically, I just basically started, you know, cutting out the carbs. I didn't do anything special. I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't pay a lot of attention to macros. I didn't really know exactly what to do. I just, I just knew that I needed to go back to something that looked like Atkins, um, because that's what this sounded like to me. And so, um, I just, I just started changing gradually, um, around that time, 2012 ish, it was really in vogue to blog your experiences and journeys. And so I started a website thinking it was just going to be kind of like a journal or a diary. And I started uh, on that website, started sharing recipes that I was coming up with to lower my carbs. Now I have to say, I was very dirty, lazy, low carb. Like I didn't, I didn't know. There were so many things I didn't know. I just, I thought it was per, I thought that all that was required to be keto was to lower carbs, you know, there, like I didn't have a bigger picture. And, uh, and so, you know, sure. I, I made, you know, tons of mistakes. Uh, you know, I, I ate foods that I wouldn't touch today. Um, but I get, I get that, that, you know, you need to start with what you know. I mean, that's all you can do. We don't know what we don't know. And so I just, I just kept, you know, I was losing weight, um, slowly and gradually. So I, you know, I just started sharing recipes. Um, people started coming to my website and I had, um, you know, uh, I, I like to cook and, and I just started cooking and sharing and, and doing that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, just losing weight. Um, I had, I had periods of time where I didn't lose weight. I had periods of time where I gained weight. Um, the year my dad died in 2017, I put back, I think 30 or 40 pounds back on. And, uh, you know, it was an emotional time at the, you know, at the time that my dad passed away, we, I mean, he, we weren't really expecting it. It was expected because he had cancer, but up until that point, he had been very healthy and vibrant and, you know, climbing trees. I mean, I remember when he was 80, he fell out of a tree, fell off his ladder and broke some ribs. And, you know, he just kept going after that. Like he was, he was unstoppable. And so when he was diagnosed with cancer, he went from being quite 
healthy and vibrant to an old man in a very short period of time. And so, you know, it was, uh, it, it, it was sudden, but, but not sudden in, in a way. Um, and uh, at the same time, after he was gone, we realized that he was also keeping my mom in order. <laughs> uh, like the day that he passed away was the day I realized that, oh boy, you know, she's, she's probably got dementia. And uh, he had done an excellent job of, you know, covering up and being the buffer and kind of making sure she was okay. And, you know, we, he did such a good job. We didn't notice. We noticed a few little things, but we just sort of, well, you know, she's getting older. (laughs) We didn't notice that she was definitely not going to be able to take care of herself. And so from that day forward, I became her primary caregiver. And, uh, you know, within a few months, she ended up living, living with, with us. So um, it is where I really learned that I did not want to follow in her footsteps. Um, By that time, you know, she was quite obese and had a multitude of health issues, all of which I could see that, you know, I needed to get back I needed to get back to something. I needed to, I mean, I I had lost about half my weight at that point that I needed to lose. So that was good. That was a good thing. I, you know, I felt, I felt better. I looked better. I, you know, I felt like I was more healthy, but I was still pretty, pretty dirty keto, I would call it. And it was hard for me to, um, to keep losing weight. It was, you know, it just became harder and harder. And so, uh, you know, I just started figuring out that I needed, I needed to eliminate things. I needed, you know, you know, dairy maybe was an issue. Sweeteners, sweet keto treats were maybe an issue. You know, I started realizing that, you know, there was probably a cleaner way to eat. And also, there was more and more information online, on YouTube, on blogs about food and about the finer points and the nuances of, of keto. And then I started seeing more things about, you know, people being carnivore. And, you know, it, it was just a continuous learning and a continuous motivation of I, I can't end up like my mom. I can't put my kids through this. And and so all of those things, um, you know, kind of helped me to get to, to a higher level. I mean, you know, it takes what it takes sometimes. And, uh, you know, at this point now, I'm probably the closest I've, I mean, I haven't weighed this little and, and and I still have 40 50 pounds to go but I haven't been this weight probably since I was a teenager you know this is I'm kind of at a at a lifetime lowish point I think and I still have I you know it, it it's not it's not easy it's still a struggle and I've tried uh, many different ways you know I've 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 done all the recommended things things, you know, the intermittent fasting, close your window, eliminate sweeteners, you know, do carnivore, uh, do carnivore more, you know, eat more meat, you're not eating enough meat, um, and and not seeing, you know, like the results are slow. I, I, I'm, I'm getting results, but it's like a snail's pace. And, and so, you know, I started on a journey of mixing things up and trying different things. Um, and, uh, I started the YouTube channel during COVID and, you know, I get a lot of positive feedback from women who are my age and, and, and men too. Thank you very much. Like, uh, you know, it's, I am getting that feedback as well as I learned things from other people who are leaving comments and 
you know, it's it's almost, you know, it's it, it it's like a almost like a two way street in on some days where where I'm like, yeah, that was that person said this, and maybe they're right, and maybe that is something else I can tweak or try, and you know, I try to take it, you know, with that in mind um, as far as you know, take, taking advice from people. And there's some amazing influencers on on YouTube right now and on social media. I kind of suck at social media. So, you know, if you look for me on Instagram or some other places, I mean, my posts are years old <laughs> because I just, uh, I just am not good at it. Um, but YouTube seems to be my place where I live the most. So thank you for those of you that are here watching this. Um, so I, 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 I feel like what I am learning now, and, and I have to say, if you've stuck me with me this far, thank you for that you're still listening. But um, for the last few months, I, I have been in Kelly Hogan's coaching group. I feel I have a soft spot for her because she was the very first carnivore I ever found. And I know she's come a long way since when I first found her, where she was early in her journey. And I thought she was kind of crazy for doing this. Um, she's come a long way and she's doing group coaching. And I thought I would sign up for a month and see see if there was something I could learn from her to pass on to the people that follow me. And I'm still there. I think it's been five or six months ago because I learned from her that it's not just about what you're eating. There's a bigger picture. It's about sleep. It's about how much sunlight are you getting? How much movement are you doing? You know, it, it's there's there's so many different things. What is your metabolic history? Um, how's your glucose? How's your ketones? How what's your fasting insulin and A1C? Like there's so many things that play into results. Um, I can eat the identical thing that. Person A eats and person B and person C and all four of us will have different results because there's so many things that play into this. And what I love is that every week there's something new in the coaching and she has studies that she, you know, I mean, she does so much research and, and she has studies that, that help so you can read more and I, I'm just super impressed. And I mean, I'm just going to hang in there until I stop learning new things. And, and uh, I don't know when that, that will be, that might, that maybe never, I have no idea. So I hope she keeps doing it for a while. Um, because now I just, I feel like I'm not banging my head against the wall anymore. And, and I was starting to feel that way and, uh, starting to, you know, feel the pressure of, Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm on YouTube and I struggle to lose another pound every month or another two pounds. And I, I'm not going to feel that pressure anymore. I'm going to move toward health instead of move toward a certain plan. And that certain plan has to be this. I don't even know how many grams of protein I should have in a day. And a lot of people ask me that because we are all so different. And, and, and I think the answer is probably different <laughs> for every person. So I, I just, I, you know, I can't give out definitive answers. And I don't think anybody can if they're honest. I think all I can do is what I'm doing, which is trying different things and learning from those things. You know, I what I am doing now is is rather than focusing on well, what does the scale say? I'm focusing on you know what's my blood glucose? How did you know I did this? How is that affected? And you know, just different things like that. You know, how much sleep am I getting? What are my sleep scores? You know, I do have uh, I have a Fitbit and it's got a method of 
figuring out your sleep and how well you did. And, and I'm using that right now because it is so important to our, it's, it's about overall health and, you know, um, you know, there's, there are people out there and, you know, sometimes I, I get upset and I call them, you know, the keto police and the carnivore police. They all have an idea of how it should look. And, and I'm happy for them that they found something that works just for them. And, and, and that's great. Um, but I've probably tried it, you know, maybe, maybe I haven't, but I, but I've sure have tried a lot of things and I, you know, I'm, I'm sticking to, you know, what, what you do is not necessarily going to work for what that person does or, or what I do. What I do is not necessarily going to work for you. Just keep trying different things. And before you try something, just assess it. Is this going to help? Is this going to uh, advance me down the road to better health um, or, or not? And, and if you don't think it does, then don't, then don't do it. If what you're doing work is working for you, you're getting the results you want, you feel fantastic. And by the way, I do feel fantastic these days then just keep doing what you're doing. You know, keep on that road to health. Just keep working on the things that you can control. We can't control the scale. It, it hurts my heart when I see people say things like, I've made a goal, I'm going to lose X pounds by this date. I honestly don't think that is a viable goal because I don't think we can control the scale. But what we can work on is how much movement are we going to do? How much sunlight are we going to get? What healthy foods are we going to eat today? What, you know, like those things that, yes, I can, I, I can, uh, I can journal. I can, I can write down things. I can have gratitude. Um, I heard in my coaching group the other day, it's called the, the G, the G hormone. Oh, I probably said this wrong. The G vitamin. I don't know the G supplement, it, but the, you know, gratitude, you know, just a state of well being that comes from all these other things to put you in a good place, you know, getting more omega threes. It doesn't have to be sardines. I, you know, I've had some flack over the sardines. Like, don't, it's okay. Just find, find another way to get omega-3s. You know, don't, it, it's, it's just, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for, for your overall health to get more omega-3s. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, you know, and, and also, you know, to get protein and to get good healthy fats. Like, work on the things that you are able to work on and set small attainable goals. Like um, I can set a goal to exercise three times this week and go for a daily walk. I can't say how much, you know, fat loss that will give me or weight loss. I can only do the activity. So I hope that makes some kind of sense that, you know, it's, it's a different it's a different type of way to, to look at, at goals. Um, environment, or like controlling our environment, um, in most ways, you know, we, we can do that. Um, we, just, we just can't control what happens on the scale. Like the bathroom scale is kind of a, a useless thing and it gets so many people derailed and certainly has for me in the past. So I think I kind of want to wrap this up because I've been talking for quite a while and I thank you if you've, if you've made it this far. Um, if, if you're new or newer and you find this all very confusing, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to start, I, I would say the best thing to do is, you know, just start small, eliminate processed sugars and other carbs and focus on foods that have one ingredient foods that you can pick up in the grocery store like a pound of ground beef 
all it should have is ground beef. Um, you know, if you're eating vegetables, pick up the vegetable. <laughs> there shouldn't be any other ingredients. If you can avoid the boxes and the packages and the snacks, those sorts of things. Um, I mean, I know some people, you know, need them when they're starting and, and I would never judge anybody for that. Cause, cause I certainly, I certainly did that in my early journey. Um, I wish I'd figured out what I know today sooner, but I didn't. And, uh, you know, it, so just, just start, start with the simplest thing you can do. Go like that for a while and, and then try something, you know, eliminate something else. Um, cause we're, we're all on this journey to better health and some of us are slow learners <laughs> and some of us, you know, just go all in. And uh, I've seen people who go from like eating drive through McDonald's on this day and the next day they're carnivore, <laughs> you know, no seed oils, no, no sweeteners, no, like just all in meat. And, and if you can do that, wow, uh, that is amazing. And, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm excited for you. Um, but if you can't, don't beat yourself up. I mean, you know, we all take how long it takes and, uh, it, you know, just, just, just get started. Just take, take the smallest baby step and get started. Um, because I can tell you as my mother aged, you know, as she went into her eighties, her life was hard. My life was hard taking care of her. It, I mean, it, it was, it was probably, you know, the hardest experience of my life was to watch her slowly die and the bulk of her issues were self-inflicted with the foods she was eating. And it, it's sad to watch that when it's somebody in your family, somebody that you love and are taken care of. And, um, I just, you know, it, it is my why now. It is what drives me to keep going even when nothing seems to be working. It still is good enough to remember my why to keep me on track. And, you know, I encourage you to also think about that and, and why you want to do this, why you need to do this. Get really specific and, you know, at some point you will be willing to do what it takes. And, and when you're ready, I'm, I'm, I'm there for you, you know, reach out. Um, so I, I, I think I need to wrap it up because I could probably, <laughs> I could probably keep going. And I, I know I want to respect your time, but thank you so much for listening. And thank you for watching and being with me because it really is helping me, you know, inch my way to that, that final goal weight that I have. Um, I just, from the bottom of my heart, I'm glad you're here and thank you for everything. We'll see you guys next week. Okay, Teddy is crying about his ball. Cut, cut.